Good morning YouTube. I thought I'd do a little quick update on what's changed and what's happening. Not a lot's happening. Um, this was the uh, Phalaenopsis that I put in water culture last week. I think it's only been barely a week but as you can see the roots are still nice and green. The water's still nice and clear so not a lot has changed with that one. Um, the others are still okay. You can see we've got some nice green tips growing on some of the roots. Um, so yeah, everything, nice green tips there. And down here. So yeah, everything seems to be fine. Um, I've got some new phalaenopsis coming in the post, some baby ones. Let's get down there so you can see them. And I've put two of the ones I had that seem to be struggling in water culture. I've put them in um, clay, small clay pots with bark and top dressed them with sphagnum moss. And I'm going to see how well they do there. But when I went to my orchid society meeting on um, last Monday, and I spoke to a chap there who's been growing orchids for many, many years. He's even been to the Solomon Islands and collected species and had an orchid named after him. Um, told me the best way to get roots um, going again on Phalaenopsis that are struggling is to get a clear plastic bag, put a bit of sphagnum moss in the bottom, put the orchid on top of the moss so that what well, you know, the central piece or the tiny bit of root that's left in the bag, seal it, obviously wet sphagnum moss, seal it up and hang it up somewhere and basically forget about it for a couple of months and then go back and you should have some nice new green roots shooting. He said that's the way he's always done it. It's always been successful for him. So if they don't recover those two phalaenopsis, then I'm going to give that a go. So, um, what else is new? I've got some streptocarpus, I think that's called. I bought it at the orchid meeting, um, and that uh, was a huge, great plant. It had a lot of crowns in it, so I split it all up, and I've um, repotted, and I managed to get, where well, is it, two, four, five, seven plants out of that one. So that's good. I also repotted my Nepenthes into that planter because it was in a pot before. So I've now planted it in there and it's got, um, I used some bark and some of the moss that we grow outside um, because it was getting a bit dry and it wasn't very happy. So um, that one's happier. And I also repotted the big one in the centre of the table um, and he's doing really well. I'm looking at possibly, I don't know if any of you can remember, but years ago they used to have what they called moss poles um, where you had like a bit of plastic tube and you had moss on it and held on with some twine and then you would attach your, your um, plants, uh, your sort of hanging plants, but if you wanted them to grow up white, you attached your plants to that. And I'm thinking, I can't see them anywhere, so I might have to make one. Got plenty of moss here. Even if you just use sphagnum moss, you know, um, and wet it down yourself, I'm sure it'll be fine. So I might have to give that a go to have that one growing up. Something's a bit more attractive than that uh, ugly steak. Um, that's all really that's changed inside. I'm going to go outside now and show you the biggest change and I am so happy with it. i um, really excited about this change and um, I'll go outside now and I'll show you what it is. Right, so here we are and I don't know if you can see but this is the biggest change and I'm so excited about it. My husband managed to get some second-hand doors from Christchurch and installed some second-hand patio doors across the front of the shade house to enclose it. And he's 
patched it up, you know, put some um, plastic up there. So it's now fully enclosed and I'm really excited about it. I'm so proud of him to do that. It was actually our neighbour who's, because we were going to build a frame and put some more plastic on it and just build like a door out of a wooden frame. But my neighbour said, look, you know, there's lots of um, people selling second-hand doors and stuff, especially after the earthquakes, because, um, you know, people have had replacements and... Um, why don't you try that? And it, yeah, it was brilliant. And the whole thing, the whole thing only cost $125. And that includes the wood. Plus, it was two sets of patio doors. One set was plain, plain glass. They are single glaze, but they're aluminium framed. And as you can see, this set had motifs of... Um, bamboo on them so there's a motif I don't know if you can see it on that side but there's a motif of a bamboo on that side and then you've got the ones on the doors there and you've got one on that side and I'm really really happy about this because although this is where we keep our spa pool or spa bath or whatever you want to call it hot tub um, and it does take up a bit of room in here, but we can push it. In a couple of months time, it needs to be um, emptied and cleaned out, which we do every about two or three months. And we can push it back further into this gap back here. There's quite a bit of space behind it. You see there's quite a bit of space behind it. So we're gonna push it right back into that gap which will give me more space for all kids down this end. And I won't have that big step in the way. But this is excellent because now I've got some nice sunny thing and we give it a damn good clean. And it's made a huge difference to the amount of sun that's coming in here. And um, the orchids are getting sort of dappled sun, as you can see. And of course now it's the sun's dropping lower in the sky. Um, so they're getting a bit more sun, but it's not red hot sun. I don't know if you can see that, but it's about the same temperature inside, inside and outside. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So I'm really, really pleased. Really pleased with it. I mean, I could even get the fogger going in here if I have to, because we've got electricity. Um, and I, but I won't be paying for heating. What I plan on doing is um, making some of those clay pot heaters. Um, if you look them up on YouTube, they look really interesting, and they look a lot less cheaper than um, you know the electricity. My husband also brought on some reflectors I don't know if you can see them down there he works for electric company and they get the old street lights and they can they get the old reflectors out of them um, those big um, bolts are for making the clay pot heaters but the reflector is um, he's going to make me a light um, with that reflector so in the winter I can give them a bit more light if they don't get it but they're getting about probably about four hours at the moment of this dappled light and I'm hoping that's going to do them for now um, but they all seem to be doing all right I mean you know I don't see any of them suffering um, the mounts are all right uh, so yeah they, they all seem to be doing really really well so anyway, it's watch this space, as they say, and um, I am so chuffed, so chuffed with these doors. My husband is such a good husband to have. He, uh, I only got to mention things and he seems to get on and do it. And it's brilliant. So happy. Anyway, that's all for now. Um, any more updates later? I'll keep you posted on that um, phalaenopsis as see how it goes, if it, uh, how the roots change colour over time. And um, I might do a quick video when I get my new phalaenopsis. I've ordered six new ones and I'm waiting for them. They're all babies, waiting for them to come. So anyway, that's all for now. Speak to you soon. Bye.
Bye.